everybody, welcome back to the stream. I am now starting a Silent Hill, one of my all-time favorite games. I'm really excited to jump back into this one. Uh, it's been a been, um, a couple years since I last played, but I, I think I pretty much still remember where a lot of stuff was from my 100% uh, Let's Play. So I'm going to be playing on hard mode. I'm going to be doing a new game plus, but since I want to show the beginning, I'm going to start a game, but um, we're going to continue on with the new game plus. So let's do that. Oh shoot, it didn't let the opening play. Oh well. <laughs> hey Axton, how's it going? <laughs> Get in alive! <laughs> you know what? I, I should play the opening, so hold on a second, guys. Let's uh exit. And reset. I mean, I just can't do it without showing the opening. It is so kick-ass. Ooh, nice. I got myself a glass of wine, and I'm ready to be spooked. Well, not really, but I'm ready to get back into Silent Hill. Uh, I think it's a Cabernet. It's box wine. Okay, I just didn't want to talk through that because it's so great. All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm streaming through Silent Hill, the, the first one. It is one of my all-time favorite games, and it's my favorite in the Silent Hill series. I haven't really played this uh, since my Let's Play, I think. Well, I think I did a charity stream, but it's been like at least two years. I I think I'm pretty confident that I remember where most of the stuff is and what, what I need to do. Um, I'm planning on playing this on hard mode. I'm doing a new game plus, but I'm going to start a regular game just so we can see the whole uh, normal intro. But then I'll, I'll switch over to the, the new game plus. I think I'm going to I'm going to go for the good. Oops. The good plus ending while I'm playing, but I can also show the UFO ending 
in maybe I can also do the good ending too. But yeah, I'm really excited, guys. So let's get this started. And also while I'm playing, um, I'm going to try to point out cool Easter eggs and whatnot as well. It probably won't be as in-depth with my Let's Play, but hopefully it'll still be, still be informative as I go. What uh, version of the game do you have? Hmm. Honestly, I've never played the Greatest Hits version. That's really interesting. going hey wait stop <laughs> okay so there's a, kind of like a little neat thing you can do here where you can find Cheryl right away so I gotta go over here first okay I might mess it up but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do it get to this little stop sign it'll automatically turn turn around but you can bypass this by spamming your inventory screen and then we can catch Cheryl on the intersection of um, I think it's it's Bachman and oh, it doesn't matter I'll show you so he's gonna turn around so hopefully I can do this without um, It's cool. <sighs> I just gotta hit it in the right spot. I did it, I tested it earlier, I got it to work. times. If I can't do it, then oh well. We'll get my let's play. Oh, fuck. Okay. Oh, I really want to show it. <laughs> It 
it is my Silent Hill 3 move <laughs> boss butt. <laughs> okay. It shouldn't be that difficult. So basically, I have to get him to move forward and quickly push my inventory uh, screen before uh, the text triggers. Once I get by just a little bit, I can move freely. And I've just been... this afternoon of figures when I'm on stream I can't do it okay, hold on let me reposition my hands Hold on, maybe if I go from this side. I think it was a little bit more in the middle of the road when I was doing it. Before, I think it was like... Watch my Let's Play. <laughs> you can see the little uh, thing there. Basically, you just see her character model standing in the middle of the road, and you can walk through her and stuff like that. It's pretty funny. So fun little fact, he says something different in the uh, PAL version of the game. Oh, what the, what is it? He says, Jesus, <laughs> what is it <laughs> in the PAL version? I thought that was always kind of funny. And also another kind of interesting difference is with the title menus. Uh, the one I'm um, playing, the North American, it had more like of a background to it. Both the PAL and the Japanese are just like a black background. I think the Japanese one also has some a fog effect, but it's kind of funny how there's different title screens across the different um, regions. Yes, I'm gonna go for the ambulance ending, of course. Who wouldn't? Can we go back? Oh no, it's blocked off! Oh well, all we can do is go forward. What's this doing here? I love this little rain effect they have. It's very cool. What's this? It looks like a, a body. See, he, he is dad of the millennium. He's, he's still going forward, even with all this scary shit. What 
is this? What's going on here? Guess I'm not gonna make it, guys. I'm not gonna make it to them. No! Okay, maybe I can do it. Maybe I can do it. Run, Harry! Did I hear? Oh, that's too bad, Harry. Okay. Oh, oops, I accidentally saved over my quick save to the main menu. Sorry, guys, I have to reset to do the hard mode so I hit f1 instead of f3 like a dupe yeah it is very i think the sound work in the first game is a lot creepier just the music itself it's very off-putting at times all right so we're gonna do New Game Plus. Hey, Sybil. Was I dreaming? How do you feel? Oh, like I've been run over by a truck. But I'm all right, I guess. Glad to hear it. You from around here? Why don't you tell me what happened? Wait a second, I'm just a tourist. I came here for a vacation. I just got here. I don't know what happened. I'd like to find out myself. Uh-huh. Have you seen a little girl? Just turned seven last month short black hair my daughter sorry the only person i've seen in this town is you where is everybody i'd tell you if i knew believe me but from what i can tell something bizarre is going on that's all i know Hmm. Hmm. What's your name? Harry. Harry Mason. Sybil Bennett. I'm a police officer from Brams, the next town over. The phones are all dead, and the radio too. I'm going back to call in some reinforcements. Good luck with that. Hmm. Hold it. Where do you think you're going? My daughter. I've got to find her. No way. It's dangerous out there. In that case, I need to find her now. Cheryl's my little girl. I can't just leave her out there by herself. Have you got a gun? Um, no. Take this, and hope you don't have to use it. <laughs> Take my gun. I know now she has the second one. It's still funny, though. 
before you pull the trigger, know who you're shooting. And don't do it unless you have to. And don't go blasting me by mistake. Uh, Got it? Can't promise anything, Sybil. Yeah, thanks. You do best to stay nearby. I'll be back with help as quick as I can. Okay, bye. So yeah, a lot of this game, the best like scares I think are sound related. What I really like especially is sometimes you'll just go into a random room and there'll just be a crash or weird knocking noises and it's like it it startles you and it put kind of puts you on edge. I I think Akira's sound work in this game in particular is is superb. So playing without sound definitely I can see why it would uh, be less scary. No gun. I hate you, Axton. Okay, hold on. I I kind of need the gun for this next spot uh part, or I'm gonna I'm going to just die. So I'll do it after this one. So, before we, uh, trigger anything... Oh, you know what? I forgot to point out the air screamer that appears when you're right here. Oh, well. So, there's a lot of cool little Easter eggs just, as, just in this one little area. Uh, we got the notepad. Someday someone may experience these bizarre events. Hopefully they will find my notes, notes useful. It's actually kind of a little bit of an Easter egg to the ending of... Um, Stephen King's The Mist. The main character in that book leaves like a similar note in a diner. I'm not gonna save right now. Not needed. Uh, speaking of Stephen King, that's him right here. The Seti Dammit poster. Uh, he actually... <laughs> it's a real little poster he did for a school newspaper uh, to encourage his fellow classmates to study for finals. And here we have a medieval madness pinball machine. It's an act. It's a real um, pinball machine. It's actually highly sought after by collectors. It, it can go for. I think when I was doing my let's play, people were saying you could get one between eight thousand and ten thousand dollars. So I'm, I'm kind of wondering if if anybody on the team were pinball fans. Um, let's see. Oh, over the counter. Oh, it's over here. You got a, a crying uh, Virgin Mary. Uh, blood coming out of her eyes. This is creepy. And over here, we have some posters advertising Portis Head, which is I th my big f favorite. <laughs> of uh uh Vicari Amoka, I think. In fact, uh the opening theme to Silent Hill uh sounds a l very similar to the opening of one of their tracks. I, the name is escaping me right now, but it is very similar. He's a big fan. All right, I think I talked about every Oh. So I am playing a new game plus. So I have some options here. Um, if you go into the option menu and you hit the shoulder buttons, you can get like a secret menu where you can change the blood color, um, how you want run, walk, auto aiming. Uh, I have bullet adjust, so I get five bullet, uh, five times the bullets, <laughs> which is very helpful for hard mode. And oh. I also have the Hyper Blaster, which I'll show I'll show off, but I won't be using the extra weapons in the game because that actually decreases your star value. 
but each time I get a weapon, I'll, I'll do a quick save and I'll show you how it works. So I think I have the yellow beam. It starts with the, I think it starts with the, the red beam, which is the lowest. It's, I think red is the same hit point as, as like a handgun bullet. I don't remember what yellow is. It might be, might be shotgun. Oh, let me do a quick save in case I die. You know what, Axon? I will try to defeat it with the knife. We'll see how I do. <laughs> yes, you can. If you have the Hyper Blaster peripheral, you just plug it in, you automatically get it. So it's a, it's a quick way <laughs> quick way to get that weapon. You don't have to get the UFO ending. So here we What's go. That? Gonna try to knife. I have a feeling huh. I'm gonna die. Radio. What's going on with that radio? Oh no! Uh, can I even stab up? Let's... No! <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's try that again. Maybe if I move out to the middle of the of the diner. Hold on. Let me can you aim up with the knife? I don't know. I know I can aim like No. I could do that. So I need the air screamer to go on the ground. But they only really do that when they're kind of idle. Uh, okay, I'll try it one more time. Okay. Otherwise, I'm going to have to use the gun. What's that? Huh. Oh, radio. Okay, let's get this. <laughs> What's going on with that radio? <laughs> Gun it is. Okay. Okay. Oh, wait, I have to go to the door. So I, I meant to I meant to show this earlier, but when you first get into the cafe and you stand here, you get a back shot of the window. Um, if you pay attention to the to the window and you move slightly, you can see the air screamer kind of fly by. So you get a little bit of a warning that you might have to fight something if you if you pay attention. Yeah, What's I don't that? I don't know how I can do it. I'm not very huh. good at wielding the radio. Knife. What's going on with that radio? So tough dream. now. What's happening to this place? I don't know, Harry. Some bad oh. juju. All right. So we did it. Do people do knife only runs in Silent Hill? I know it's a thing with Resident Evil. Cafe five to two. Where could Cheryl have gone? I guess I'll check that alley again. Do, do we really have to, Harry? It was pretty scary last time. Okay. And I have got to say, uh, I have a new appreciation for the maps in Silent Hill after going back and playing through the original Resident Evil, 
games and uh, Dino Crisis, what I really love about this map, not only is does that Harry marks it and makes little notes, but it shows you where you are on the map. <laughs> Resident Evil didn't show me where I was, so I ended up getting... It, it was useless at times because I'm like, okay, I actually don't know what end of the hallway I'm at right now. <laughs> so a new appreciation for this. It's so simple, but yet it took, I don't know how many games before Resident Evil put a little marker for the person. Uh, four? Did it take till four? Was there in Code Veronica? I can't remember. Oh boy. All right. And... Oh, thank you, Chris Paxton. You're very nice. Thank you so much. All right, we had a couple more Easter eggs here. We got Cafe Fab 2. And first, we have Bill Skins 5th, which is a uh, nod to Silence of the Lambs. It, in the very beginning of the movie, there's like a bulletin board, and you see that paper pinned up with that headline. And the cafe name and this sign right here. Oh, sorry, I can't move the camera up. I have to back up. Uh, breakfast, lunch. It's seen in the very beginning of Oliver Stone's Natural Born Killers. The, the actual signage is copied, which is uh, pretty funny. And over here, we have a Coca-Cola bumper sticker. There's a lot of little product placement in this game. I don't think they got permission. But yeah. But this is Coco Cola. Alright. So let's... I guess first off, you guys all know about the, the street names being named after famous um, horror sci-fi writers or books. Uh, Midwitch. So I think first up, let's go and check out Harry's Jeep. Because if you go back up there, you can get a health drink. Hey, Rainbow Knight. Hey, Rainbow, how's it going? Here is another um, Easter egg. This is from um, the movie Demons. Uh, Metropole. And that was the name of the theater where um, people were given a free ticket, like at the subway. Uh, this weird, creepy guy in a mask was handing out these like golden like tickets to go to see a, a free show, a movie showing. And while they were there, they got infected and they became these like demonic zombie things and over here you can see it's you gotta kind of squint but it's an actual like screen of one of the first people who got infected and sort of transformed I forgot her name the character's name but she was in the bathroom and like this green goo was coming out of her mouth it was pretty nasty I'm going the right way. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's going to give you a tour. Oh, birdie. Leave me alone. So here's his Jeep. For years, I didn't realize you could actually see his Jeep in the game. It wasn't until I started, I was, I started going on the Silent Hill forums um, early 2000s, and I'm like, what? You can see his Jeep? Holy shit! <laughs> My car too banged up to drive. Where's Cheryl? Hope she's safe. And you get a health drink. Dang it, birdie. Leave me alone.
And now we're going to 7-Eleven. Oh, excuse me, 8. I love this little sitting animation the air screamers do. No, buddy, I'm going inside. You can't stop me. <laughs> he needs some ice cream. So I'm picking up the channeling stone here. Um, this is unlocked after, I think, you're completing the game once. I think I think you just have to complete it once. And you have the option to go for the UFO ending. You know, there's not a lot in here. I know that Rotary, I think it was a real magazine. And... Uh, bash um, laundry detergent that, that was a real uh, product as well yeah there you go oh oh no it's on the other side so I'm also gonna try to pick up all the items as well. I think I remember where most of them are, so it's going to be kind of like a little challenge for me to see if I can remember where everything is. Oh, nope. Sorry, still getting used to the controls. Alright. That's it. So I'm actually supposed to be going back to the alley, so I guess we should do that. Where is that again? Oh, it's down the street. Okay, so along the way there's another little easter egg, easter egg, a little uh, nod I can point out. So right here we have a little poster for Pet Cemetery. Another uh, Stephen King <laughs> book. They're big fans. What's this? Like, Fish and fries. Fish and chips. Ooh, let's go get some fish and chips. Another little difference, when you're playing on hard mode, there's going to be actually a little bit more enemies, and they'll spawn in places that don't in normal and easy mode. For example, there's a dog in this alley, and if you play on normal easy, this dog isn't going to be there. Also, enemies will respawn as well in certain areas, like in the school, hospital, whatnot. So, where are you, puppy? Isn't the Cheryl sketchbook? Hmm. She's at the school. You're like, oh, that's not too far. We could totally get there in a couple minutes. Uh, nope. Games like you thought. Also, um, what's kind of funny is before this game released, they sent out like review copies and whatnot 
and on those review copies, the steel pipe was actually in a different spot. It was actually on Midwich Road underneath the um, overpass. And a lot of the guides, because of that, uh, in magazines and whatnot at the time, was placing the pipe there. So there's a lot of like difference differences between the two. I really want to get my hands on a review version of this game just to document the uh, differences because there's a lot like one big big one is a zodiac puzzle it was a lot tougher in the review version i have not seen the pet cemetery remake also i love the cover to this drawing block sketchbook cover this picture it's me It looks just like you, Harry. Um, another little funny uh, little tidbit here. You notice in that close-up and in the opening movie, the it says gibberish on the, the sketchbook that Cheryl holds. Funny, though, if you look, I think it's the E3 trailer that shows part of the opening. It actually reads correct it actually reads drawing block on that uh tr version of the trailer so i'm wondering what happened here where the gibberish stayed in the game and with the promotion it spelled correctly it's supposed to say drawing block but And I really love the dynamic angles in this game as well. That walking through that alleyway, the first... Oh, shit. I forgot there's dogs out here. Okay. Ruining my tour guide. Okay. Running away. Um, it's so iconic just walking down that alleyway the first, the first time. And... It's so iconic, it was copied in the 2006 movie, which I thought was so cool. When I saw it in the theater, I got so excited. Alright. So it shouldn't be that hard to get in Midwich, we just need to go down this way. Can't be too hard. You know what? I miss the big chasms in the other games. <laughs> oh, you're not going this way, Harry. Nope. And what's also kind of interesting, a lot of what's iconic about this game is sort of either happened by accident or it was something to cover up their shortcomings because this game was made by a very small team and I think at the time it was only 16 people on the team. So, oh, my favorite little meme. Probably a doghouse, though I'm not sure since there's no dog around. So you can't actually grab the key to the Love and Street house until you find Cheryl's note down here. Actually, how am I doing with life? I got hit a couple times. So actually, you're gonna be like, oh, I can just go this way to get to the school. Nope. I gotta kill these dogs. Damn! Party in the red. House, Love and Street. So that clues you in that you need to check out the doghouse for the key. Um, so for example, the iconic fog, uh, 
isn't this game to hide the environments popping up in the distance? And the reason why it's all, there's no like CG backgrounds was because they didn't think they could compete with their competitor, which was Capcom. Um, they just didn't have the manpower or I guess maybe the, maybe the talent at the time to create a bunch of CG backgrounds. So they decided to have the di dynamic camera. So we were able to get a lot of cool angles and stuff throughout the game, which I think worked in its favor. And why did I go to the door? I need to go to the doghouse. And speaking of the team, like I said, it was made uh, about 15 to 16 people. They were all sort of the rejects of Konami at the time. So Konami was a shitty company to work for for a long time. <laughs> Based on the treatment uh, the team got while making this game. Konami lost faith pretty much right away with this. They wanted them to make a... Uh, Hollywood style kind of like Resident Evil and they weren't seeing that and they just sort of left them alone they're like whatever you're gonna fail which worked out in the favor they were able to do their own thing and they they made something I think a lot better than if they just tried to copy Resident Evil They took a lot of risks that I think they wouldn't have been able to do if they had, you know, corporate looking over the shoulder, especially with like Akira's sound design. It was very different at the time. I remember I found it was in a Swedish uh, magazine. I just forgot the name of it. Um, I remember I, I went through um, Fiverr to get it translated, but he said that when he first showed the team, his sound work for this game, somebody stood up and then went to go check the connections on the television because they thought it was broken. <laughs> All the weird like noises he was putting into the, the music and stuff like that, which is hilarious. Oh, Level, Level Magazine, that's what it's called. It's, um, it was in uh, Sweden. I got the digital version and then I it translated the entire article. It was very eye-opening in terms of kind of their mindset uh, they interviewed Akira Yamaoka and uh, Takeyoshi Sato, I believe. I don't think they talked to Kichiro Toyama, the director. But this is back in 2008, I believe, was when the interview. Um, and Akira, I think Akira was the one that was gave the quote that the team was very demoralized because they were basically told they were going to fail like a bunch of times. And it just really bummed me out reading that because <laughs> they had something really special and they just didn't know it. And for the longest time, they just thought this was going to bomb. It wasn't really until uh, E3 uh, 98 when they showed the first trailer and saw the audience reaction. Like people were like, holy shit, what game is this? This looks beautiful. And they were all into it. Then Konami was like, oh, maybe we should start putting money into promoting this game. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Konami's wrong, big surprise. All right. So we need to find three keys to get that back door open. They're pretty much in a similar area. You know how great uh, Konami is at promoting their products. I remember I used to get so lost playing this game years ago.
but I, I think this game does do a pretty good job on kind of cluing players in to where they need to go. Like they'll cut off areas um, that kind of corral you to find the clues so you know how you need to proceed. It's still very um, open. Like you, you can spend hours just wandering around the town if you really want to. But it's something I felt I missed in in the later later game this year. Well, except Downpour kind of went back to doing the whole you can wander around. Yeah, run away. So another little fun uh, tidbit, this in the trade demo, and I think uh, other little demos, it used to say Buffalo Police. So funny thing, I it, I read in P uh, PSM magazine, you know, back in the day, there was an, or not PSM, I'm sorry, official PlayStation magazine. There was an interview with Keicho Kiriyama, Kiriyamaka and um, Takeyoshi Sato. And they mentioned that Chicago was actually an inspiration for this for this game. And I didn't put this together. It didn't take it, it wasn't until after I completed my Let's Play when um, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. And will and will over on the Silent Hill Discord was like, you know, uh, the map of Buffalo Illinois looks pretty close to the map of Silent Hill. And I was like, wait, you're kidding, right? And no, so I actually have it open here. So you see the layout of the Silent Hill. It's like a square, right? You got the school um, to the left. You got a church near the bottom. So let's see if I still have it here. Now this is Buffalo, Illinois. Oh wait, nope. Oh, I think I closed it. No, it's right here. Window, window. It worked earlier today. Oh, I'm mad. It doesn't want to work. Okay. I will just give you the link then, guys. If you check it out, looks very similar to the map of Silent Hill. Actually, I wonder why it's not reading my... game. That's... Window... Nope. Not there. Light area? Huh. I don't know why my uh, browser isn't capturing. But if you check that link, you can see the map. It looks just like this. So Buffalo Police makes more a little bit more sense when you take it with that map as well. Uh, apparently also Konami's offices were headquartered back then in Chicago as well. So it kind of makes sense that the team would have done their research in the Chicago area as well for this game. Like, for example, Silent Hill 2, a lot of their research was done near when Konami's offices were in Redwood City. They did, excuse me, a lot of their research in San Bruno, um, which is right there. Hop, hop, skip, and a jump away from uh, Redwood City. City.
I think what kind of surprised me when I saw um, Buffalo, Illinois, was just there was a church at the bottom and a school to the left. I was like, whoa, it does look like uh, Silent Hill on the four roads as well. They weren't really hiding their influence. my butt, bird. Oh, I don't think I actually said this. So, so the team is made of 16 people and they were sort of the rejects. They were people who didn't fit in in other areas of um, Konami and being part of, I, at the time they were called Team Silent, was sort of their last chance. A lot of them were gonna leave the company. Um, so this game was sort of like their last hurrah, last chance. And luckily for them, it was a success. So much so, when they uh, started Silent Hill 2, they got a staff of 50. So big jump. In manpower. <sighs> oh, and this uh, view that I keep doing is also something that's unlocked once you beat the game once. Someone played basketball with a dog's head. Yeah, don't park here, guys. Off limits. actually Boston Market, but it's called Poston Market. It was changed um, before release. It used to say Boston Market in like the trade demo and early demos given away on in magazines. So it's pretty funny. <laughs> and we got Queen Burger, which is a kind of a nod to Burger King. First aid kit. Oh, no, pick it up. Oh. 
Run! Harry, run! I do like how the dogs just sort of give up after a little bit. So, I can just run away. Like, eh, he's not worth it. Yeah, and I immediately lost it. <laughs> oh well, I'm trying to collect all the items anyway, so no big deal. Oh, dang it. <coughs> they want to do that. All right, we're safe for now, Harry. I forgot to show the katana. Hold on a second. And the gun. So let me do that. Just do a quick save in here. There we go. Make sure. Okay. So let me show you uh, two of the special weapons. So I got this hyper blaster for getting the UFO ending. It has the yellow beam because. I think last time I played, I got a better star score. So it went from a red beam to yellow. And what's kind of cool about this gun is it just like automatically, it'll even go through walls sometimes, like <laughs> to hit, hit the uh, enemies. So it's pretty, pretty powerful little gun. Uh, let's see, let's go back to those other doggies. Show them who's boss. And the katana is pretty funny because Harry slides around when he uses it. All right. See, look, it's like already aiming. Dog's toast. Hey, okay, let's do the katana. So what's fun about this is he slides. He goes, woo, woo, woo. Let's see if I can a ton of a puppy. Hell yeah. Oh. go. Okay. Oh, I can't do a downward. Okay. Bet that's an even more powerful swing. Let's, let me try that out. I wonder if it has a big enough reach that I could get a nurse screamer. Let's see. Birdie, come back. Oh, kind of. Oh, oops. Yeah, he can. It can reach it. Okay, it's still pretty awkward, but um, but yeah. Those are the those are the two spe special weapons I have so far. Uh, once I get past the school, I'll be able to pick up the chainsaw and a rock drill. Oh, we didn't look at the keys either. My bad. 
So we have three keys here, and they are of the lion, woodman, and scarecrow, which is from um, uh, Wizard of Oz. So we got like a little uh, fairy tale type theme going. You're gonna notice that a little bit more as we go through the game. Oh, I forgot to, sorry guys, hold on. I forgot to actually look at the keys. You can get a little close up. Okay, scarecrow. Woodman and lion. And let look anything else. Nope. Okay. Um, I'm probably not going to be getting any new consoles just yet. I'm going to wait a little bit for them to get the kinks out <laughs> and then do it. Also, I can't, I can't find them anywhere anyway, so couldn't if, even if I wanted to. Hmm. The only thing that would make me get one right away is if a new Silent Hill game was announced. Then I'll be like, take my money! <laughs> What's going on? Oh, that just reminds me of uh, this little scene. So in... Lost Memories, which is a little a supplementary little book thing that was kind of on the other side of the Japanese Silent Hill 3 official guidebook. There was a bunch of like insights uh, talking to um, the key players in, in the series who worked on Silent Hill 1 through 3. Um, There's like creator commentary and whatnot. And at one point, they pointed out that the keys of Four Eclipse was supposed to represent um, Alessa and Cheryl uh, overlapping and becoming one. It's supposed to be like a little hint of that's what's actually happening here. Um, so you have to find those keys to open the door to continue forward. I thought that was a neat little um, thing. Yeah, it's scary right now, isn't it? Okay. I gotta say, it's pretty jar. It's pretty jarring the other world transitions in this game. <laughs> it's like you go through a door and then boom. <laughs> oh, you're in another world. Or boom, it's nighttime. The worst is when there's really intense music in just one little room. When you're like, why? Why is the music so intense in this little area? I don't see anything. Should I be scared? Okay. Let's do a quick save. Okay, I'm gonna turn the light off. I know it's probably gonna be hard for you guys to see, but I just wanna get a box of bullets and I just don't wanna have to fight a bunch of things. So, <laughs> please, please bear with me. Wait, hold on, make sure I'm going the right way. Yeah, I'm facing the right way. Okay, I, I can see. I just remember when I was I did my Let's Play, people said that they really couldn't see when I turned my flashlight off, so I was a little bit worried. I mean, I can see just fine. Oop, there it is. So, funny thing, Heather can actually pick up items with her flashlight off. So she has that above her, uh, better than her dad. So let me just get to the end of this alleyway and I'll turn this back on. Because if it's on, I'm going to have like three dogs, a couple air screamers on my butt. I just don't want to fight things right now. run into him, really. Okay. Hmm. 
Hey dog. Oh, I should have kept my light off. I forgot about the dogs here. So, originally this is where you're supposed to pick up the pipe. Or at least in the trade demo and the uh, review copy. I believe even in the official guidebook, it also had the pipe placed here. Though I could be wrong, so I'd have to double check on that. do a quick save just in case I die on the way to school. Oh, that sounded horrible. <sighs> and I'll do a proper save once I get to in, into my bridge. Oh, my tree. Stay away, birdie! I think the snow effect in this game is really good as well. So we're gonna actually come here a little bit later. And what's cool is it just skips the travel, which is awesome. What's not awesome is having to go through a sewer level, but it's not that bad in this game, at least. Yep, only time it snowed, besides uh, Shattered Memories. We made it! Midwich Elementary! And if you didn't know, the name comes from the novel The Midwich Cuckoos, which... Whoop! 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 Let's get inside before I start talking. Um, which involves um, a town. Everybody, I think, falls asleep. And then all the women suddenly get pregnant. And I think it was by aliens. And they have kids. And they have glowing eyes. And they're creepy. And it was made into a movie a couple times. Even, I think, a musical. Um, you might know Village of the Dam is, is based on that novel. Uh, no, I'm gonna go to the bus after I complete, uh, Midwitch. Alright. And I'm sure you guys already all know this, but there's a, a lot of stuff in Midwitch that is based off of Kindergarten Cop, which is hilarious. It was, uh, it wasn't brought to fandom's attention, really, until about 2011, when uh, Gyromancy, super, super fan of Silent Hill 1, they have a great website dedicated to the game. Um, it's in Spanish, but you can do a Google Translate. They point out all the Easter eggs, and they've even uh, made videos a couple years back showing some of the beta monsters that were supposed to be in this game. Uh, anyway, they're super fan. They noticed the similarities between the stuff in Midwich and uh, the school, Astora Elementary, in Kindergarten Cop, and they did sort of like a side-by-side -side photos and posted it on the Silent Hill forum. And I remember when that happened, and everyone was just like, "What?" <laughs> and since then, it's always popped up on different listicles and videos about things you didn't know about Silent Hill, but I just want to put credit where credit's due. It's all thanks to Gyromancy. They were the one that figured it out and pointed it out. And Good eye. Good eye. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Yeah, so this poster right here is something you can see in the movie. Uh, if you, I, do, I do show little clips from the movie in my Let's Play, my 100% Let's Play on my when he plays YouTube channel where I point out like actual footage next to the posters. So if you're interested in see how crazily <laughs> they copied the school, check out, check out the let's play. And that no drugs poster is another one. The front facade, it's a little bit hard to see in game because of the camera angle, but it, it, it's exactly the same. The architecture is the same. Even the layout of the school. Oh, wrong button with me. Um, in the movie, there is a courtyard in the middle as well with like bushes and stuff. So I, I, my guess is the team wanted 
to have an American school. They had limited research uh, resources for research. I mean, they weren't on location very long. Um, so they went with American movies. <laughs> yeah, it's not a tumor. All right. I think I'm safe. With my... Yeah, I'm safe right now. And fun fact, uh, if you guys are playing Dead by Daylight, there is a Midwitch map and it's not exactly fun to play a lot of the times, but the attention to detail is really, really, really good. I was very surprised when I was running through the halls with my life and I was seeing the kindergarten cop posters, <laughs> even like similar layouts to certain classrooms and whatnot. It, it, you could tell that the Dead by Daylight people were big fans of Silent Hill. They put a lot of cool Easter eggs in that stage. So if you can, if you have the game, try to play a custom game and just walk around and look look at all the areas. It, um, when I played, I played with Axton, we were even able to find like a little picture, a drawing of a Kiriyamaoka in one of the classrooms. It was pretty cute. All right. Oh, I didn't look at the teacher list. My bad. Sorry about that. All right. More Ronaldo Gordon. This must be a list of teachers. Also, the members of Sonic Youth. A lot of, a lot of music and movie references in this game. This calendar right here is also, in Kindergarten Cop, like this whole little area with the door copied from that movie. Pretty funny. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but if you look closely at the book, that bottom picture is actually uh, <laughs> uh, Jules and Vincent from Pulp Fiction. In the demo of the game, that um, I think in both the trade demo and like the official magazine demo, uh, places magazine demo, you could see it in the close-up, but they had a placeholder image and it was Jules and Vincent. <laughs> they just didn't change the far away shot, I guess, in the, in the final game. I think the top graphic was from another movie and I just can't remember what it was, but obviously they, they changed it to generic um, scenery here. Okay, it's written in blood. 12 o'clock, a place with songs and sound. A silver guidepost is untapped in lost tongues, awakening at the ordained order. Written in blood, someone's losing a lot of blood. 10 o'clock, alchemy laboratory, gold in an old man's palm, the future hidden in his fist, exchange for sage's water. blood of course five o'clock darkness that brings the choking heat flames render the silence awakening the hungry beast open time's door to be beckon prey uh so these notes are just a little clue about the order you have to solve the puzzles uh you notice there's different times here we had 12 10 and 5 there is a clock tower in the courtyard uh, there's also two demon kids out here, so let me turn off my flashlight for a second. No, he still got me. So the annoying thing about playing on hard, like I mentioned, is some of the enemies will end up respawning even if I clear a hallway. Um, it's only certain hallways, but it's still pretty annoying. So we have a clock tower right here and a locked door. 
But the game shows us the time. So the hands are stopped at 10 o'clock. And one of the notes talked about Alchemy Laboratory, 10 o'clock. So we need to go up to the chemistry lab on the second floor and get the um, gold medallion from the hand in there. So we need to do that one first. Another fun fact about Dead by Daylight is if you do the two gens, the gen in the chemistry lab and then the gen in the uh, music room, in the same order as in the game, and then you open the exit gates, this clock tower in the game map will open up to reveal um, a chest with, I think, a, a good item in it, and also uh, a flying, glowing Floras, and maybe a seal of Metatron, too? Um, it's pretty cool. All right, so we need to go upstairs. First, I need to go into the health office. Get myself another health kit and save my game. Because I have not done a proper save yet. It always bummed me out that they didn't provide like a a health kit in Dead by Daylight in this in this area. Oh. It's the perfect spot for it. Oh, um, Axton, I have a video of it on my uh, YouTube channel. I, when I streamed it, I was able to get it twice. So um, a little later, I can give you a link to it so you can see it. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's locked. I have to go across the- oh wait, I didn't get the bullets in here. This is one of my favorite lines in the game. Harry is an art critic. A picture of a door. I don't know who drew it, but it's certainly in bad taste. Spawn in this area. Good. All right. I think I need to turn off my light. Yes. Oh, hello. These guys are so cute. Squeaker. So these guys originally had skin on them, but it was deemed too disturbing to, I guess, kill kids. So they just made them these little shadow um, creatures that Harry can't really interact. They're just there to make your radio go off, give static, kind of give you a scare. I remember there's a room, uh, the library upstairs, you get kind of put on edge because you think, oh shit, there's another demon kid up here. No, it's just... Just one of these little guys. Um, you get, you can actually see them. Well, more recently, you can see them with their original skin uh, in one of Gyromancy's uh, videos. And before that, you could see a glimpse of them in the, the E3 trailer for the game. So what's kind of funny about these creatures in general is this is the only release with... Um, the demon kids in them because it's been censored in both Japan and in uh, PAL territories. And even before that, they went through several... Oh, shit! Oh, I had the light off. Hold on. I'm going to talk about this. I need, to, I need to be in a safe area. So, they went through like four revisions, I think, before they were allowed to even 
put them in the game because of the um, ethics committee kept saying it was too much like a child and they had to basically twist it the face more make the face smaller take away the eyes the mouth whatnot um they talk a little bit more about it in the lost memories um, the book but yeah this is the only only version you can get these creatures they were replaced by mumblers in both japan and in nepal Greece. Oh, another funny thing, they're not actually named Grey Children in any of the literature from back when this game was released. That was a fan name and also coined officially by the 2006 movie in the credits. So these guys technically don't have a name in... Oh shit. In Lost, Lost Releases, they're just called Child 3. <laughs> So they don't really have an official name. Um, of course, I'm gonna, about to die. Okay, let's unlock the door. I hate fighting these guys because they're so short and they just grab Harry's waist and they're annoying. So. I'm trying not to fight them. Is this where you- no, I think you hear the crying upstairs. wanted to make sure. And another thing, Harry cannot unlock doors without his flashlight on. You kids should be in class. Please stay away from me. So I don't I'm not bothering to kill them, also, because they will just respawn, and it's a waste of bullets. Hmm. I think it's safe for me to... I say as I hear an enemy. Okay, we'll go to the roof a little bit later. Oh my god, they're still not dead. Kick it. There you go. I like how I'm going out of my way to get all these health drinks and first aid kits, and I'm just killing myself in the process <laughs> and end up having to use them. Uh, another fun little thing in Asandal 3, they actually recreate these classrooms. It's like they took basically the model and just upscaled the the, the textures. Um, I don't think it's this particular classroom. It's just, I think it's a picture of a sunflower and you see the wolf on the wall. But I was pretty impressed because I played them uh, back to back and I was like, holy shit, it's, it's just like the game. This right here, I always think is maybe a little kid drawing of... Um, Oh my god, I just lost their na the name of the monster you fight in this level. Uh, it's not Twin Feeler. Um, anyway, the monster I fight in this level kind of looks like that. So I'm wondering if he's drawing the fairy tale version of the, of the monster. 
Is there anything else here that's kind of cool? I think what impressed me most with the Silent Hill 3 uh, redo was they even, they made like the dissection poster, the sunflower, the wolf, even the weird cat, I think. Yeah, it's not this room either. So in one of these bathrooms, you can hear Alessa cry. Oh, there we go. It also happens on the Dead by Daylight uh, map. Ah, uh, yeah, because she was bullied and stuff in school. Okay, I should say I interpreted as Alessa due to her um, extreme bullying, uh, being bullied in school by the kids, hence the monsters being children. I always thought it was her crying in the bathroom. But you know, nothing, nothing is really for sure, but that's how I interpreted it. I need to go to the chem lab. Oh, well, no, let's go to the chem lab. Oh. Hey, Emperor, how's it going? It's still water. Um, this gives me flashbacks of the ambulance ending. Where they're like, you need to pick up the distilled water, and um, what, what else were you supposed to pick up? And you're supposed to make a bomb to blow the wall to get to the <laughs> ambulance. <laughs> I read the whole thing, um, or I summarized it in my in my last part, but it's pretty insane that people believed it. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like, why did why did we even believe this? You can't make a bomb with distilled water. <laughs> we are idiots. Oh, I forgot to turn off my light. No! Let go. shut tight as if never to let go. <sighs> oh, already using up all my health stuff. Okay. It's going great. Damn, that just melted. Texture work in this game is really nice. Okay. So we got one. We got to put in the clock tower so we can do the next one. Okay, let's sneak around you. of a clock tower is engraved on the surface found in the chemistry lab. Okay. 
So now that we got the first piece in, we got to look at the clock tower again. And the time has changed now to 12 o'clock. And if we remember back in the notes, that's talking about um, music. So we need to go up to the music room. did go through all those classrooms. Okay, music room looks like. All right. Uh, this is actually from a real painting, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the name. But it was something, again, that gyromancy was able to find and match. Alright, so we got a bloody piano. There's some blood on some of the keys. Does this mean anything? Let's check the piano. So it's a good thing to know wh which keys make that clicking sound because it's very important for this puzzle. Now I know this is this puzzle. Uh, a lot of people got stuck on it, and unfortunately, even the official guide wasn't much help. <laughs> it just gave you um, uh, notes. It didn't actually, you know, put a diagram and say here, push them in this order. It, it, I felt like it really didn't explain the puzzle. Neither did the Konami frequently asked questions on its official site. It just like pushed A, D, G, E, whatever. It wasn't very helpful, but I'll break it down for you guys. It's written in blood. A tale of birds without a voice. First flew the greedy pelican, eager for the reward, white wings flailing. Then came a silent dove flying beyond the pelican as far as he could. A raven flies in, flying higher than the dove, just to show that he can. A swan glides in to find a peaceful spot next to another bird. Finally, out comes a crow, coming quickly to a stop, yawning, then napping. Who will show the way? Who will be the key? Who will lead to the silver reward? So essentially, um, the birds mentioned in the poem represent a key on the piano and how far they flew represents which key you're gonna have to push so if we go back to the first uh, stanza was it or what it is uh, the greedy pelican he didn't get very far um, so he, we would have to push the first white key, key that clicked then came a silent dove flying beyond the pelican as far as he could. So then after we push that first key, we have to pu uh, push the furthest key to the right that clicks. A raven, a raven flies in, flying higher than the dove, because the dove was the furthest white key that clicks, we'll have to click on the furthest black key that clicks, right above it. Then the swan glides in to find a peaceful spot next to another bird. This will be right next to the dove. It's the only other um, white key that uh, clicks. And then finally, out comes a crow coming quickly to a stop. Um, it's the first black key that clicks. So you just need to go on that order. And you'll get the Bedeckian. Pretty simple once you take away the more flowery language here. Hey. So I think 
this was the first key? Yes. So we got duh, um, pelican, and then dove, raven, swan, and I think this is, shoot, it's this one, isn't it? Okay, so I gotta do this over again. <laughs> All right. Okay, so pelican, swan, Pelican, dove, crow. This is swan. And raven, and then crow is last. Sorry. Already mixing up the bird names. But yeah, it's pretty simple. Alright. Let's pick this bad boy up. doors that are on the second floor and this poster is creepy a friend in need and there's a scary looking dude How many of you guys were scared to open this locker when you first played? Oh, it's a kitty! Then gets brutally murdered. Which sucks because I killed the kids in the hallway. As Michael Jordan would say, fuck them kids. Oh, this little poster here is another one from Kindergarten Cop. Oh, look! You're back! Oh, there's too many kids. I think this is the classroom. Yeah, there's the sunflowers. Oh, fuck! I'm like, where did he go? Oh, he's right behind me. Oh, my hand. I'm not doing so good in my hard mode run. <laughs> Okay, so this was the this is the classroom that was actually recreated in um, Silent Hill Three, with uh, of course the Alessa desk in the middle. That's not here at the moment, but they recreated the layout, the wolf poster, the placement of the map, the sunflowers, the bottle, even um, where is it? Oh, the little frogs. Right there. Yeah, I was really impressed when I saw it. Uh, I don't think there's anything else noteworthy in the classroom besides pointing that out. <laughs> okay. 
interesting, interesting art on the wall in, in the school. Oh, here we go. That's the, that's the frog texture I was looking for. Pig. Um, I mean, I have in the past when I did my charity stream. But yeah, I would love to replay through Deadly Premonition again. And point Oh, yeah, so here's here's another little thing that points about Chicago. Uh, there's Chicago news posters in in the school as well. Oh. Okay, they're far enough away. <laughs> oh, like, oh no. Oh, I'm safe in here. So the thing is, we got the little shadow guys. Why can't I think of their names right now? Oh, they disappeared. I was too slow. So yeah, that's meant to, to put you on edge. Like, oh no, there's more kids in this room. But there is one behind this door. So we're gonna turn my light off. Hello, I see you. Oh, there it is. Well, there's this po poster. A woman came down from Planet Vulcan. So I assume uh, maybe that's a Star Trek res reference? Like Spock and stuff? Oh, thank you. That was everything in there. Okay. Oh yeah, I've just done a loop. Okay, actually I didn't unlock the door. Oh, I guess I don't need to. Uh -huh. <laughs> No, I gotta sneak by these guys. <laughs> oh, there's three of them. Dang it! <laughs> About to go put on my leg. Wait, no, 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 I can't do that. There's enemies. Alright, now I can. Alright, let's put this medallion in. And then we just have to do one more thing, and we can enter the other world version of the school. Music's getting very intense now. <laughs> uh, time o'clock is at five o'clock. So I forgot exactly what the note said. Something about fire and the beast. We basically need to go down to the boiler room and turn on the boilers. And it will open up the clock doors. Actually, I could probably just read the notes. Go over here. Last one to look at, of course. 
Darkness that brings the choking heat. Flames are under the silence, awakening the hungry beast. So yeah, we just have to go down to the boiler room. Which is... Oh, I didn't unlock the door. Oh! I think he's dead. Yeah, I played this so much better in my let's play. <laughs> Lots more practice, let me tell you. Across the courtyard. Oh wait, I didn't unlock shit. Well, I had to go back upstairs and then downstairs because I didn't unlock the door. Oh my dope. Oh! I need to remember to unlock my flashlights. I'm trying to turn it on when I can, because I know it's hard to see. Okay. Oh boy. Mm. I think the same amount of demon kids on the other side, doesn't matter. bothering me that I can't remember the Shadow Kid's name. I know, I'll, I'll turn my flashlight on in a second. Stalker! There we go. Oh, man. Over here. The valve is tightly shut. Can't move it. Don't know what it's for. Better leave it alone. But we're going to turn on the boiler. There's a switch. Do you want to press the switch? Yes. That's the name. Oh. Okay. Man, that dude really needs a friend. Advertising it everywhere. All right. So now that we've turned on the boiler, the clock tower doors should be open. And oh, I've got to turn this off again. Uh, ha ha! Miss me. seen Pet Cemetery, so I'll have to take your word for it. Keep out. Oh, whoops.
Where am I? Have I been here before? Yeah, it's a school. It's just evil now. More evil. Hmm. I don't remember this being here before. Nope. Let's go back, Harry. I don't I don't like this version of the school. Aw, oh, you locked it. So now we get to explore the school all over again. But this time, even more locked doors and cut off hallways. Fun. Uh, if you waste your bullets, the um, incub incubus will automatically die because there's no way for you to hit him with a melee weapon. Hello, how's it going? There's a rotating fan thing in both games, so I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, wow! I, you know what? I never noticed the body there! <laughs> oh, wow! All these years, I just, I guess I was always just distracted by the moving fan. I never saw the body. Huh. Okay. So, sorry again. If you can't see, um, I'm dodging some monsters. This is creepy. I love how Harry sees this ball and is just like, you know what? I'm gonna pick it up. It might be useful. It is, but I mean, why doesn't he pick up a block over there? You got some weird dolls hanging here too. One's decapitated. A headless doll is stuck to the wall. Uh, some gurneys. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, um, hallway is going to be blocked. I have to go through classrooms and I warp to the second floor through a bathroom. I'm picking I'm trying to pick up all the items because I'm gonna need all the health items the rate I'm going Jesus <laughs> I thought it'd be a little bit better than this but nope it's locked oh there's cockroaches in here isn't there yeah it's cockroaches Yeah, I, 
I'm always surprised when I find something new in a game I've played so many times. Like Deadly Premonition or Silent Hill. Picture card. Yes. Let's see if you have the cards. Yes. The cards are scattered. <laughs> he must really have to pee at this point. Just from nerves and how much liquid he's intaking right now. Okay. This is the phone. This is not the room I thought it was! No! Oh my god! <laughs> There's so many in here! No! Wait, is there any items? Shit. Uh, oh. Okay. Oh boy! Oh, my health is still okay. He didn't bang me up too bad when he grabbed me. That's good. Okay. Be safe. I'm going to shut off my light. Don't remember. Yep. There's a guy in here too. Oh. Fun little thing here. Now it notice says hell. It's pretty funny. Let's see. Hell is coming, I think is what it's supposed to say. Yeah, but the other parts are, are smudged. I think we're already in it. You know what, I should probably do... No, I'll just wait until I end the stream, and then I'll save again. Nope, nope. <laughs> oh. let's, let's redo that. got me. So this is the lobby. Ampule. A wheelchair at an elementary school? Damn, Harry, you know, uh, kids in wheelchairs need to go to school too. If it is, there's no keyhole or even a knob. If I push it, it moves a bit, but it certainly won't open. 
What's this? I'm playing with headphones right now. <laughs> What's this? In the center of the door is a horizontal slot. What is it for? It's for that key we picked up. But before I do that, let's get the ammo. I think that's it. So these guys, we see all, we're gonna see these guys a lot throughout the game, but they're actually wearing the ceremonial robes of, of this cult. And we actually see Elasa in them as well at the very end of the game. They kind of look like straight jackets. But that was uh, something that was revealed in Lost Memories, I think? Or was it the back of the Silent Hill 1 official guide? No, oh, one or the other. Oh, I gotta unlock it. And we just warped to the second floor. So this this area of the second floor is actually blocked off by a gate, you see here? So this is the only way to access these bathrooms. Some kid was not having a good day. Time to get the shotgun. I like to think that the janitor in the Silent Hill movie was a nod to this. Yeah, no reaction. No reaction. <laughs> Mary's like, you know, I'm over it by this point. A hanging body. Why would somebody? So this is where you can pick up the shotgun. If you miss it though, you have another chance to pick it up in the police station. And this note right here, if you don't read this note, you won't be able to read a book in the library on the second floor. Um, which I wanna show you in a little bit. So it's very important you try to read all the notes that you can. Some some things will not be accessible if you don't. Leonard Rhine and the monster lurks. The monster lurks? What's that supposed to mean? So I believe the book you find says something about uh, Leonard Rhine. I think that's the author, which is why he will pick it up. Okay. Quick save. Oh, it's always pretty safe. Okay, there's a cockroach and a kid. Oh, there's two kids! Oh, 
There's only cockroach in town. I can handle cockroach. Can't use the phone. Oh, and now we come to a scene that a lot of people end up, st they, they stop playing because they get too creeped out at this section, at least what I've read over the years on forums. Cheryl! Cheryl! Yeah, I sound like her. Okay. Okay, there's a bunch of creatures out there. I'm gonna do a quick save. <sighs> this is so good. Oh, it doesn't. It did. Oh, and there must be upstairs. Remember, in one's hallways, there's a health drink on a bench. Okay. So, um... We actually have to get to the other side of the school and down the stairs to get to the boiler room. And it's all of our stuff is blocked up. We kind of have to go this roundabout way. Uh, we need to get a key that unlocks the library reserve and another key that unlocks the classroom so we can make our way down the stairs. So up on the roof, there's going to be a key that's stuck in a drain that we need to um, flush out. So I'm going to do that first. Oh, some wheelchairs. Anything? Oh, there's some bodies. Hello. And also, we need to use our channeling stone up here as well. This is the first spot you need to use it to um, trigger the UFO ending. You need to use it in five areas. You have to use it um, on the school roof, outside Alcamilla Hospital, before you fight the float stinger, uh, the motel, the boat, and then finally the lighthouse, and that's what triggers the UFO ending. So I like how the developers made sure you knew to look by changing the camera angle and marking the spot with blood. <sighs> There's a hang key, it's just out of reach. Yeah, so funny story. It, in both the official guide and the uh, unauthorized guide by Brady Games, they both say you only have to use it in two areas. <laughs> and it's like, uh, secret, all the secrets revealed? I don't think so. You're not triggering the UFO ending. <laughs> you're, you're missing three other spots here. I mean, that, that had to be frustrating for people who bought them. Like, why, why aren't they triggering the guide? I think they, I think they said to, you have to use it on the school and the boat. I think those were the two areas they said to use the <laughs> channeling stone. So, let's just drain it. Yes. Oh, shoot. Good thing we picked up that pink rubber ball. 
because now we can plug it up. Imagine if you didn't have to make your way all the way back down. Oh, it sucks. go let's use the channeling stone what and no you can't uh, because you can't uh, the channeling stone isn't in the um, eight at 7-eleven uh, store um, until your second playthrough so unlike homecoming you cannot get your ufo ending first yes i'm i'm uh doing a new game plus from the last hard game i i think i streamed which is why i'm able to pick up all the special weapons and what not. Um, I'm having a brain. Where's the door? Oh, there. there it is. So I'll be able to pick up both the chainsaw and the rock drill. And I don't even have to put gas in them. They'll just be full. Because I think this is the save is my fifth time through okay so we need to go to the other side uh, the locker room uh, holds the other key I th oh wait you know what let's go downstairs first and get the key that got flushed well I started I did start uh, a, a new game just so it just so I could show the opening bit, and then I just reloaded and loaded up a, a new game. Plus, I forgot to shut off my light. Come on, I just have the most trouble with the kids in this game. That and the. Uh, rompers. I really don't like them, but the nurses and uh, the other creatures I'm pretty fine at attacking. So the hospital, I'll probably just keep my flashlight on. It's just really the midwitch where I gotta turn it off a bunch. Where's the. There it is. Oh, this is the classroom key. All right, so the locker room has the library reserve key. We're almost done with this uh, section, guys. So we get the key, and then we'll do a boss battle. And I forgot to turn off my flashlight again because I'm an idiot. Split head on hard is actually uh, pretty hard. I remember when I was first trying it on hard mode, I was expecting to just be able to shoot him in the mouth once and kill him just like I did in normal and that's not the case. You have to shoot him six times. So you mean you have to also avoid his jaws with the automatic death. <sighs> Let's try this again. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure that was all the bullets. Is there anything down here? No. Okay. Let's get those bullets. Oh, 
kid. Dang it. What really sucks is, <laughs> so you're like, you think, you're thinking, oh, this room won't have any enemies, but once you get the key and come back, there's gonna be like three kids in this room. It's very, very mean of the game to do. <laughs> So in Silent Hill 2, uh, there's cockroaches in that game as well, and I think Lost Memories said it's supposed to be a holdover of the, the shit that went on in this game. Like, you, uh, Alessa's influence is still being felt, so since that's why there's cockroaches. Uh, I just wanted to show this off. Um, this is the lobby, and you can see the hanging body there. You can't really see it unless you get the, the like, first person view mode unlocked because if you just walk down the hall you don't see it so there's like cool hidden details you can find if you replay and, and mess with this view this is locked right oh is it another kitty Let's see. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> I still jumped. That happens in the, in the locker room in Dead by Daylight as well. A body will just come flying out. Doesn't drop a key though. Alright, we got both keys now. We can go fight Splithead. Fun times. You're like, oh, the monsters are gone. I'm safe. Alright. And then you pop in here, and it's like, haha, you thought! I mean, there's one, oh, there's only two. Is there three, or just two? There's three. Okay. So that was very mean of you, game, to do this. We need to. Oh my god, there's like five! There's even more! That is so mean! <laughs> No, let me through. Okay, good thing I, I did a quick save. <laughs> okay. Five kids in this room. Jeez. It's not cool. kidding me <laughs> my dodging needs some work <sighs> yeah I want to stab him in the butt okay maybe I'll go on this side I just god there's so many of them Quick save. <laughs> no! 
I'm just gonna run like the wind. Okay, I think I'm safe. Yeah. All right, let's go to the library. Oh, I didn't. Fuck. I thought I did a quick save in right outside the hallway. Yeah. What did I do to them? I just shot them a couple times. Yeah, he shouldn't have been able to grab me. Woo! We made it! Alright. We just have to dodge some kids down another hallway and we're home free. Hear that little knocking? Oh, that's so creepy. <laughs> like, oh, is that the game? Is there someone knocking on my door? No, it's the game. All right, so this is the book uh, you won't be able to read unless you read the note in the bathroom stall. What's this? The monster, okay, it says the monster lurks. The monster lurks, lurks is the book's title. Chapter 3, Manifestation of Delusions. Poltergeists are among these. Negative emotions like fear, worry, or stress manifest into external energy with physical effects. Nightmares have, in some cases, been shown to trigger them. However, such phenomena do not appear to happen to just anyone. Although it's not clear why, adolescents, especially girls, are prone to such occurrences. Um, there's another note later on in Nowhere, which you wouldn't be you won't be able to read unless you've, I think, observed and read everything related to the drug side plot as well. Oh yeah, you, uh, in Silent Hill Two, there's um, there's a couple rooms with weird just noises. I think footsteps, there's the one with whispering that's random, um, like that pig squeal. Yeah, the games are just full of weird noises and random rooms to make you jump. I love it. Okay. Wait, did I get the... So this book is your clue on how to defeat the upcoming uh, monster, the boss. Hearing this, the hunter armed with a bow and arrow said, I will kill the lizard. But upon meeting his opponent, he held back, taunting, who's afraid of a reptile? See the little picture of the, of the monster reptile? It looks just like that kid drawing. <laughs> At this, the furious lizard hissed, I'll swallow you up in a single bite. Then the huge creature attacked, jaws open wide. This is what the man wanted. Calmly drawing his bow, he shot into the lizard's gaping mouth. Effortlessly, the arrow flew, piercing the defenseless maw, and the lizard fell down dead. This is from an old fairy tale. I remember reading it as a kid. Yes, the the footsteps on the roof in the in the little construction area. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was I was practicing going through that game because I was going to stream it. Uh, f I, I had a charity stream 
where I was going to stream one through three, and it had been a while since I played three, and I was playing through it, and I could have, when I got to the air, I could have sworn, um, my, one of my parents was in the garage, like, knocking on the wall to my bedroom, because it, it's up against the, the, the garage, but no, it was the game. It was messing with me that, that much, because it's playing with headphones and stuff. Okay. Uh, all right. So now I just need to survive uh, two more classrooms and we're home free. Some health drink. No, that's on the other end. Yeah, there is one part in this game that really made me jump out of my seat and it was in the sewers with the shotgun blast. I was not expecting that. And this big boom, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Shit. No, let go. Okay. I can do this. I just gotta channel my inner solid snake, I guess, and sneak by these guys. Dun, 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 dun. Mission impossible. Nope. Very rambly. Come on, guys. Oh, uh, so in the sewer, there you have to pick up the key to open up the gate to exit into the lakeside area of the town. And once you pick up the key, uh, you're being chased by uh, hanging scratchers, scratchers, I can't remember what they're called. Um, and you're running away from them and the music's getting intense and all of a sudden you hear this shotgun blast randomly, made me jump out of my skin. I was like, damn Akira, you got me all these years later. <laughs> Cause I completely forgot about it. It surprised me. Oh, there it is. I knew one of these benches had a health drink. No, it happens all the time. Uh, given how often I've replayed this, it happens in the same spot. Let's see, did I unlock all the doors and go everywhere? It looks like it. Minus some classroom doors. Cool. We're ready to face the split head. I think the only game with like a randomized sound that you might not always get is the Silent Hill 2 with the, the apartment whispering. I think that that's the one that's random. Uh, and maybe the pig squeal too in, in Brookhaven? That might be randomized as well. <laughs> she didn't put the ring in. Yeah, that, that is a, that is something you don't expect. <laughs> okay, do I remember this? Is it, I think? Uh, is it three and two? I think it's three and two, okay. So let's try it first. <laughs> he's like, oh my God, he's, excuse me, he's dead. 
There's not too many areas where you get like an automatic death in this game, so that is very surprising. Where you're like, oh shit. But, I mean, the game does warn you. Don't take the dagger. Unless you get the ring of contract. Okay. Let's see. If we I think it's two on this side. Yeah, I think it's. Oh no, I messed up. Is it three? Was it two on the right? Oh. Okay. I think I got it backwards. So let me exit and then read. Two right, three on the left. Oh wait, it didn't reset. Okay, is it reset now? Okay, so let's do two. Oh shit! You know what? Let's just reload it. <laughs> I had a feeling I'd fuck that up. <clears throat> okay, so two right. Yes! Okay. I knew I, I knew I, I remembered. I just uh, I remembered them backwards. Okay. Hello, Hobo. How is it going, Hobo Joe? I like all the uh, emoticons. Let's do a quick save and put my shotgun on. Oh boy. Hope I don't die too much against this guy. I think some of my muscle memory is coming back, though. So you gotta wound him enough so he... He makes a big noise and he spits out some stuff. I think it's like about six shots with a shotgun. There we go. Um, and after that, you just gotta aim for the mouth and move backwards. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> I didn't move back fast enough. I can do this, guys. 
I used to be able to do it in like one shot. <laughs> so out of practice. Okay. Shoot the butt some more. There we go. Maybe I should do more something with this one. Is I die again? No! Fuck! That into a Hmm? What was that? Who in the hell was that? Where am I? This is a boiler room? What's going on here? Oh man, Harry. Lots of stuff. Okay. Okay, Gordon Key. Old Solomon Hill, Southwest Block. the classrooms are uh, locked so we can't explore it in the daytime unfortunately but if we take a look at the teachers list again he will mark where Kay Gordon's home is on his map starting at 8 30. Um, I think I'll probably be able to get through the hospital level tomorrow. Cool. Thank you guys all uh, thank you guys all so much for hanging out with me tonight. I'll continue this tomorrow night starting at 8 30. Uh, the stream will be archived on the Whitney Plays channel in a few hours. So I hope you guys have a great night, a uh, great day tomorrow, and I'll speak to you all again real soon. Good night.